Hello everyone, my name is Michelangelo and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about three very popular handguns. So what we have today is the Smith & Wesson 642, the Smith & Wesson m and Shield, and the Sig Sauer P365XL. So what makes all three of these unique? Well, uh, in their time, uh, these were very, very popular handguns. Uh, so the Smith & Wesson Airweight uh, 642 is a 38 Special Plus P 5-shot revolver. And it is very, very small. It's smaller than uh, than the shield, and it's about the same size as the P365. Now, the reason why this is important is that in the time of revolvers, this was considered a very, very compact firearm. This is not so much anymore because obviously the uh, P365 is right here, and it outshines it in almost every single way. Sorry, but... It is what it is, at least on paper it does. If you shot revolvers all your life, you would probably shoot this revolver better than you would shoot this, this semi-auto. But for the majority of people, the P365 is better in almost every way, and except for maybe the price point. So right now, the air weight goes for about $400, $450. At least that's what I bought mine for. And this was during COVID. And basically what makes this unique is that it's just a really, really simple manual of arms. Uh, just check out my history of revolvers. It just has a double action trigger pull. It's about approximately 12 pounds and it just has a really short barrel. Now, most people carry these in their pocket or on a fanny pack or just on their person because I really like small firearms. So moving on, what used to dominate the market before the P365 came out was the subcombat size of the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield. So what made this so popular is that during the time when People were, there's a small little caliber war. I wouldn't say a super large one, but there was a point in time where 9mm was slightly anemic compared to what it was now. This was mainly in the mid-2000s, back when the FBI and police agencies were using 40. And what made the Smith & Wesson shield so popular is the fact that you could get it in 9mm, 40, and 45. Now, obviously, the higher in caliber you go, the less rounds you got. So just keep that in mind if you're thinking about picking up a 45 Smith & Wesson shield. And also, the Smith & Wesson shield 45 is slightly larger. Now, the one that you see in front of you is actually a 1.0. Right now, there's actually three versions of the shield. You have the 1.0, the 2.0, and now what, um, what was recently released, the Shield Plus. And what essentially what the Shield Plus is, is it's a direct competitor with the SIG P365XL. Because the Shield Plus has the same round capacity and it is slightly thicker than its predecessor because of the higher mag capacity. So before the release of the P365 and the Springfield Hellcat, the Shield was one of the most go-to, if not the most go-to, budget subcompact firearm. Because not only did it shoot well, it had great aftermarket support, they were super reliable, and if you wanted a family of guns, which was really, really popular when this was invented, you could get the full-size M&P uh, 2.0, or you could get the M&P 2.0 Compact. But either way, they were essentially the exact same guns, just to a different scale. SIG uh, has a very similar line to that, and we will get to that here shortly. And for the revolvers, this was kind of a concept that was there but it wasn't like a really really marketable thing yet so there are revolvers that are completely identical to this one that are just slightly larger this one is in the j frame you can get a k and l frame if you really wanted and it's again another one of those things but the difference is that between all three of these guns this revolver is only four hundred dollars but once you get into the larger revolvers that's when you immediately jump up to the six seven hundred dollar range which for on again on paper for what you get is statistically inferior compared to a semi-auto. Now that's not what we're going to talk about in this video, but that is just something to keep in mind of. So moving on, that was kind of the little spiel about the uh, Smith and Smith and Wesson M&P Shield. So if you are looking for your first single stack subcompact handgun, this is not a bad way to go. You don't need to buy it new. There are plenty of them on the used market. It's been out for a very very long time, and Honestly, if you can swing it, I would definitely get the Shield Plus if that's something you're into. And outside of that, we just move on to what's new in the market. So the SIG P365 and the P365XL, which is a slightly larger version than this, it, it completely took over the market. And the reason why is that in this gun with a uh, with a pinky extension, and I also believe with just a flat magazine, holds 10 rounds. Now, if I were to pick these up, and then show them to you. As you can see, if I put both barrels right on the table, 
Uh, the SIG P365 is shorter not only in length, but also in grip. So, with that being said, is that now we have higher round count. Sorry, I'm trying not to make too much noise. But now what we have is that in the P365, we have 10 rounds, or I believe 12 rounds with the extended magazine, compared to the shield, which is larger in a single stack, with at most eight rounds without an aftermarket magazine or aftermarket magazine modification, or seven rounds with a flush fit. So SIG uh, really, really uh, innovated and pushed the market forward for this. Now Smith & Wesson has again uh, responded with the Shield Plus, and then also Springfield has responded with their uh, Hellcat. Now with that being said, and I believe Ruger also has one as well, but I don't know what it's called because I haven't really looked into it. I'm not big on Ruger, but Point being is that uh, SIG pushed the market forward. This was the most popular handgun and I believe in 2019 and maybe even in 2020 just because of its size. Now the XL is slightly larger and I believe that one has a 13 or 14 round capacity. Don't quote me, I don't own one. And basically uh, out of these three, the best, like if you were trying to find something that was like, if you wanted to go for the, the new and improved and you know, the the perfect of, the, not I want to say the perfect of the perfect, but the new and improved and you want to be kind of close to everyone else, get the, get the P365. But if you want something tried and true, something that's been tested, something with plenty of aftermarket, I'm not saying that the SIG P365 does not have a lot of aftermarket. It does, because again, it is one of the most popular handguns on the market. It's just the shield has been around a lot longer, so there might be a little more variety. Now, SIG also tends to have a premium to it, so just keep that in mind as well. Now the larger brother to the P365, and this is not a direct uh, direct larger brother because I think uh, function design-wise are slightly different, is the P320. The P320 has uh, is a modular handgun now used by the US military as the M17 or the M18. And it's a modular system where you can have a subcompact, compact, and full-size handgun. This is like what I guess SIG would consider their micro-compact because this is even smaller than the P320 subcompact. I know I'm throwing a lot of information at you and I unfortunately don't have a P320 anymore to actually show you what that looks like, but you just, I mean, do a little bit of Googling and you can kind of see what I'm talking about. But basically what I'm trying to get out here is that I'm just trying to display three really, really popular handguns or firearms on the market. And if you want a revolver, this is a very popular revolver. And the big thing that I want to stress about these first two choices is that they've been out, out for a while and you can find a used one in relatively good condition. And on top of that, uh, there is different iterations of these. So Smith & Wesson has a performance one as well where it has a ported barrel and I believe it, had, it might have an optics cut. Uh, again, don't quote me on that because I don't have one. But point being is that if you're trying to get into the handgun market and you're trying to figure out what your first subcompact firearm should be, uh, this is, these three would be a very, very fantastic choice. Now, as a little disclaimer, if you have never shot a revolver before, this is, I would not recommend as a first handgun period. This is a very, very difficult shooter. I, I personally have a hard time uh, shooting it at 10 yards. Like I would need a insurmountable amount of practice with revolvers just to make this proficient. I mainly bought this for the channel. I don't carry it at all because of that reason. Or if I do carry it, it's complete. It's just because I can't carry this one for some reason. And that's a very, very rare. Now with this one, what I love about this one is that it's very similar to the size of the revolver. So anything that I would have used the revolver for, now I can use this handgun for. This handgun is perfect for pocket carry and it's also perfect for fanny pack carry, which is what I use it for when I go to the gym. And again, this is just one of those things where uh, because of SIG, the market is being pushed forward once again. So if you are going to buy a handgun that for about $400, brand new, these two would be your best bet. If you're looking to spend a little more, 500, probably realistically closer to $600, the SIG P365 is a fantastic firearm to purchase. Now, also while I'm on the P365, keep in mind that the first generation had some issues with the magazine. There was a, a a piece inside here that would actually scratch up the back of the magazine and I believe it's caused some malfunctions. So keep in mind that if you're buying a used P365 first generation to check for that, to see the, the owner's magazines if you can and to see if they're damaged or more importantly, 
look at the wear on the gun and see if the magazines are brand new. Now, of course, the owner, you can ask the owner if he sent it back to SIG and see if they've repaired it and all that stuff, so on and so forth. So just do your due diligence when you buy a first gen P365. Uh, with, again, the shield, unless you buy like the first, the first batch of the 1.0s, which I believe would be fairly difficult to do at this point in time. Uh, I believe those had some problems as well. But again, uh, just do your research, see how the firearm is and all that stuff as well. And then finally with this one, uh, the biggest thing with revolvers is that you gotta make sure the timing's good. And the only way you can see that is by seeing it in person and ideally test firing it before you buy it. But here on, here nor there, this is pretty much the, the best three handguns. I wanna say the best three, but if you are getting into subcompacts for the first time, these three handguns would be a fantastic start. Again, depending on how much you're willing to pay and what your personal preference is, you can't go wrong with these three. My name is Michelangelo, and thank you for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one.